the subcontinent where some of the greatest religions of the world originated the nation which created history by attaining freedom through non-violent means the economy which is the fourth largest in the world in terms of purchasing power parity the land supporting a multilingual multi-ethnic multicultural and yet functional democracy our country has two official names india and bharat the persians and arabs used yet another name for the country hindustan or al hind and since persian has played a big part in the development of our national language hindi the term hindustan is also used in common parlance today both hindustan and india however are derived from the name of the river indus which marked the western boundary of india for travelers indus again is derived from the sanskrit name sindhu and both terms have been in use since 5th century bce however these are the names given to us by the travelers and traders what did the indigenous people of ancient india refer to their country as the indus saraswati people extended in the west from afghanistan pakistan border all the way up to the yamuna in the east and gujarat in the south this region especially the land between the saraswati and ganga rivers was known as aryavarta or the land of the noble the mesopotamians with whom the ancient indians had extensive trade relations referred to this region as meluha delving further into the research i quite literally stumbled onto an ancient ruler emperor agnidhra the grandson of the first man swayambhu manu who is believed to have ruled over the entire globe then known as the jambudweep while retiring agnidhra divided the planet into nine continents or divisions handing them over to his nine sons to rule thus the peninsular stretch spreading from himalayas to the ocean came under the supervision of his eldest son nabi thereby giving us the oldest appellation of our land the nabi varsha as most of you would know the term nabi refers to the navel in sanskrit and thus nabi varsha could easily be translated as the central region interestingly the japanese name for india was tenjiku tian the root word means heaven while jiku means the center of translating it to the heavenly center of the world according to at least half a dozen different scriptures our country is called bharat as a mark of respect to the legendary emperor chakravarti raja bharat this fact has been attested by the vishnu puran linga puran vayu puran brahmand puran agni puran skand puran and markandeya puran now there are again two very interesting stories about this one name and i'm going to share both of them with you today the first legend begins with emperor nabhi the great grandson of manu whom we encountered above according to hindu as well as jain scriptures nabhi dev was married to meru devi the daughter of indra and their eldest son was saint king rishabdev now rishabdev was the first tirthankar according to the jain tradition and i should mention here that shrimad bhagavatam also accounts him as the eighth of the 24 incarnations of lord vishnu according to the bhagavatam he was born to show the people of this world the path of salvation it was he who laid down the foundations of civilization and advised people to follow the path of spiritual bliss instead of indulging in a life of worldly pleasures and enjoyment rishabdev had many sons and the eldest two of his two wives were bharat and bahubali the two sons were competing for the elusive title of chakravarti that is emperor of entire world but bharat was the natural winner and as per the scriptures it is this bharat after whom our country is named talking of ascetic practices it has been observed that a lot of indus saraswati civilization seals and figurines depict yogic postures on them which by the way highlights the continuity of yogic practice in india since at least 5000 years ago there are certain seals that depict the yogic position called kayotsarga traditionally described in connection with the penance of rishabdev it may very well be that the seals record the histories of jain tirthankars as much as the hindu gods as ultimately both belong to the same spiritual tradition 
The second legend of Bharat brings us into a more familiar territory, probably due to its popularity and wider reach, the epic Mahabharat. The story begins with the Brahma Rishi Vishwamitra, one of the seven great seers of Hindu mythology. The Rishi's penance worried Indra sufficiently enough to make him send Menaka, the most beautiful apsara in the heaven, to distract the sage. The result of their alliance was Shakuntala, who got married to King Dushyant of the ruling lunar dynasty. Dushyant and Shakuntala's son was called Sarvadaman, the subduer of all, by the caretakers in the ashram where he grew up. Even as a kid, he would play with the lions and the other ferocious animals in the jungle. By the time he was six, he could subjugate lions and tigers with his bare hands, a feat which is remarkable and is mentioned more than once in various scriptures. Nevertheless, this subduing child of Shakuntala was later renamed Bharat, as he was cherished by all in his father's kingdom. Interestingly, there's again an Indus Saraswati seal that matches the description of Bharat subduing two tigers with his bare hands. The scene may or may not refer to Shakuntala's son, but its iconography is certainly suggestive. These seals, when deciphered, would be an extremely valuable and authentic source of our ancient history. This appellation for the country was well noted in the ancient world as well. From the perspective of the Malaysians, Indians were the most common visitors from the West. Therefore, the word Bharat was absorbed in Malay language, meaning West. For the Middle Eastern traders, particularly Arabs and Turks, Spices were the most common materials coming from the East. Therefore, some scholars believe the term Bharat was first borrowed into the Arabic as Baharat, meaning spices, and then into Turkish as Baharat, which means the same. Fortunately, the two Bharats of our history who gave their name to the nation were called the same. Otherwise, one of them could have easily been forgotten like the Emperor Nabi. We should therefore understand Bharat to mean not just the land of Bharat, but the land of Bharats instead. Today, India is ranked 5th in the countries with highest GDPs in the world. We have launched Mangalyaan, a Mars Orbiter mission, and we have successfully placed it in the orbit in our first attempt. And India is the only country to do that. India has one of the largest productive population not just in Asia but in the entire world. If the Indian youth takes one step forward to investigate about the facts of the ancient Indian culture by adhering to truth, then we can make India the golden bird once again. So join us on this grand journey through ancient India as we discover a multitude of topics ranging from ancient Indian astronomy, mathematics, architecture up to Sanskrit prasadi and Vedic literature. If you believe our cause to be genuine, then follow our Instagram page Satyalok and please share this video with your followers. Stay tuned. Stay educated and last but not the least, know your culture by self-investigation of the truth. Shubhaste Panthana Sandhu, Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.